The Rite of Spring solo is just that, that in its most pure essence. This famous riot that happened in 1913, the bassoon in its highest register, you know, was the beginning of the chaos. It has obviously become one of those few moments that has defined what people thought that instrument did or could do. I mean, I feel like there's the world before the Rite of Spring and there's the world after it. Today, it's almost the influence of Rite of Spring. One of the first things you have to do is make sure you don't sound like it because the tendency is to almost want to imitate it, right? I really just couldn't fathom, what is this? This is classical music. That was the moment when my path as a composer began. I think the first piece of his that I heard live was the Rite of Spring. Actually, when I was a student in, in Canada, it was uh, the Toronto Symphony came to visit, and it kind of it just bowled me over the sense of um, vibrancy. And this is a piece that's you know at the time almost a hundred years old that still feels so alive. Stravinsky really you know sort of rounded out a description of the human condition by including joy, by including play. He gave me the concept of serious play. I would not be a composer probably without Stravinsky. I wouldn't be writing classical music, but Stravinsky really changed the whole direction of my life more than once. I have a giant picture of him over my desk where I compose. It's maybe a little, I may be a little obsessed. I began writing Tehillim, and I'm saying the words Hashem, I am a supreme composer. I also heard simultaneously one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two. <laughs> Where did that come from? Okay, where that came from is the end of Dance, Dance Sacral. Stravinsky came uninvited. Well, you know, come in, Igor. Welcome. Good to see you. <laughs> Da-dee-da-dee-da-dee-da-dee-da-dee-da-dee-da-dee-da-dee-da-dee-da-dee-da-dee-da-dee-da-dee-da-dee-da-dee-da-dee-da-dee-da-dee-da-dee-da-dee